Hello, KMAP students. Um, today, Mr. Moore and I are showing you the electrolysis lab that we wish you were doing for real. So here's the virtual version. Okay, so the whole idea is that uh, we're going to electrolyze an acidified aqueous solution of sodium iodate with 0.1 amps of current for five minutes. Then we're going to give the solution a five minute, five minute rest period. And after that, we're going to measure the absorbance of our electrolyzed solution with a spectrophotometer. Okay? So here's a schematic drawing of the cell we're using. Now, again, this is electrolysis. It's an electrolytic cell. It is a non-spontaneous reaction. So we need a power supply to force this process to happen. Okay, so we have a power supply. We have an ammeter to measure the current for us. And then we have our electrodes that are sticking into our iodate, sodium iodate solution. So again, what's going on here is the power supply at the positive post is pulling electrons out and then it's pushing electrons in at the negative post. Okay, so this is the picture version. Let's go back, Mr. Moore, and show them what it looks like set up. Okay, so just uh, while we're looking at this picture, the power supply, look at that positive post in the power supply. So the electrons are getting pulled in there. So does that mean that in that solution, something's having its electrons pulled away from it, pulled out of it? And then in the negative, the electrons are going to flow out of the negative from the power supply, go through the ammeter, and something's going to have to be reduced. It's going to deliver the electrons on that left uh, electrode, and something will have to be reduced there. Okay. Okay, so here's what it looks like in real life. Okay, our power supply. Again, here's the positive post. Okay, wire coming to our electrode, into the iodate solution. Electrode here. Here's our ammeter. So the power supply, again, is pushing electrons out of the negative post, and it flows to the ammeter, and then it's pulling electrons in at the positive post. The ammeter looks like it's complicated because there's all of these posts on it, but it really isn't. Notice on the, the, the readout here, there's three different scales, one below the lines and two above the lines. Um, so those three different scales correspond with the three red posts. That's all that is. It's not really complicated at all. Right. And uh, we're using the top scale here, which is the 500 milliamp scale. And so we wanted to use a tenth of an amp. And so we're going to set the ammeter right here because 100 milliamps is 0.1 amps. Yep. And uh, we've got our timer here, which I'll have to start again. Okay, so we'll get our power supply going and... We need to acidify the solution. I didn't do that yet. Oh, we haven't acidified the solution. Yep. Yeah, this won't happen unless that sodium iodate solution is acidified. So this is sodium iodate solution. You can't tell, but it's got sodium iodate dissolved in it. There's a few milliliters of uh, sulfuric acid. We're being wild and crazy today, so we're giving it three squirts. <laughs> so that should be enough, shouldn't it, Mr. Uh, that should be enough, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Get the power supply on. Oops. I'm going to get our timer going here. Whoop. Uh, 
Timer's going. How am I doing okay, on the so pointer, Mr. Myers? Timer's good there. and Yeah, that looks great. 100 milliamps, 0.1 amp. And uh, maybe we should Timer's show them moving. The, yeah, for sure. the beaker here, Mr. Moore. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to... This is the positive, and over here is the negative. So just follow where those things are going, and we can make some observations. Some bubbling happening. I'm going to bring it down here. Are the graduations in the way? Oh, no, we can see that. Hmm. You notice we're getting a brownish color showing up over here. That's our negative post. And there's a lot of bubbles coming out on the positive post. We're gonna go ahead and turn the camera off now until our five minutes is up, then we'll be back on uh, to turn this off. Currently we're at a minute 27, so we'll let this go for another few minutes. At five minutes, we'll be back. Watching the clock. Just about time to turn that off. Mr. Hevel's got his hand on the switch. Five minutes. So. After five minutes, see if the solution has changed color. We've got a brown solution. There is, looking carefully at this, some solid that has collected on the top. We're going to let this rest now another five minutes. We've done this uh, experiment a few times and find that the results seem to be better if we just let it sit there for a while and not bother it. So we'll be back again on in another five minutes. We've, oh, the uh, we lost it. There it is. Uh, the phone went to yeah. sleep. Stupid smartphone. But we'll be back in another five minutes after the rest period. Yeah, so we're now up to, uh, so we just left the clock running. So our five minute resting period is just about up. Okay. All right. So now, before you do anything with yep. that, I will mention, uh, at, when we first stopped the current, uh, there was quite a bit of solid in the top of that and there's not so much solid in the top anymore what has happened to it some of it has gone down you can see that there's some solid at the bottom but our hope with that rusting period is that some of that has actually uh, dissolved or gotten absorbed into the solution I don't know if it looks any darker brown uh, than when we first turned the five minutes of electrolyzing up okay so now we're going to uh, take advantage of Beer's Law. We're going to measure a concentration of iodine by running uh, light through it with a spectral photometer. We're trying out a new spectral photometer today. Did I put it in the right way? It's got an arrow there. So I must, I must be okay. I think so. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off. Okay, so our spect spectrophotometer gave us an absorbance reading of 0.19, and that was uh, measuring the absorbance of the iodine that was generated. So uh, this document will be up there in Schoology in our lab folder. But you recall using an absorbance uh, curve, calibration curve, to help us figure out the concentration 
of our dissolved species. So we know the absorbance was 0.19. You can find that on the graph. And you can translate that into an iodine concentration. And we even have the equation for that line up there, which might be easier to use than trying to physically read the graph itself. Mm -hmm. So that iodine concentration is an important result of our electrolysis. So on the document that's on Schoology, we're going to have three questions to answer for this lab. You'll need the concentration to be able to answer those questions. Yes. 